Hey guys, Traveling Philosophers here. Uh I'm at my friend's cabin right now, that's why the background's different. But a quick unboxing type review video, because I haven't really extensively tested this product yet, on the Kestrel Skeleton EDC knife. When I was looking to purchase a knife for me and Bella for our backpacking trip through South America, I had, I had three main requirements, okay? I wanted it to be lightweight, I wanted it to be rust resistant. Most of the knives that I already have are carbon steel, and carbon steel isn't very rust resistant. Because it's really humid there, um, in the rainforest obviously, and there's a lot of moisture, and we're going to be spending a lot of time on the coast. So I can't bring a high carbon steel blade with rust too much. I wanted something that was really lightweight, rust resistant, and I wanted something that could kind of be, I don't really want to say concealable, because I'm not going to be concealing it per se, but something that's easy to carry in addition to being light. I wanted something that maybe if I decide to, I can carry it like in the city and it won't be very noticeable. So I bought this when it was on sale for $99.99. It was on sale for 100 bucks. Now I believe it's $129.99. So now it's 130 bucks on their website. I know sometimes Dropbox does a deal with them. For the 100 bucks. I don't really regret buying it. I was really curious about it. I got the stainless steel model. They also have a kind where it's titanium that's sandwiched around um, a tungsten carbide um, blade. Now I did a lot of research about that and I didn't go with it. The advantage to that would be it would be like a dive knife. It wouldn't rust at all because those metals don't oxidize really. But the disadvantage is that the tungsten carbide uh, blade sharpening it is kind of weird. And it's not going to be able to get as sharp as the stainless steel. And microscopically, it has a rougher edge, which means that it, it's it's going to cut a little bit differently. If you're just cutting rope and stuff like that, then it's fine. But if you really want to use it as like a bushcraft type knife a lot, it's going to be a little weird to cut certain substances with. It won't be as sharp, and it could chip. It's not. It's it's very brittle. It's a very brittle edge. It's not as resistant to um shopping not that you're really gonna chop with this but anyway so i wanted something that was lightweight rust resistant and would be like a good everyday knife now this primarily it's lightweight i think it's around like 100 grams or something crazy like that i'll, I'll put all that info in the description um, let's we'll start with the the pros so the pros it's incredibly lightweight so they're marketing it towards ultra light people and backpackers if you want to backpack and you don't really use your knife much for like the occasional trimming of um rope or string or opening packages and stuff like that and you just want to have a knife to have a knife in case you need a knife but you don't want to feel you don't want to know it's there you don't want to always be aware that you're carrying it because it's so heavy and big and whatever um then this is tiny and for its for its strength it, it's more durable than most folders um that especially most folders of the hundred dollar price budget because it's one piece of steel so there's no access point um the blade is kind of small I think it's two and a half inches. I'm going to compare it to my Mora, which is something that I probably would have preferred, except for the fact that his, this has the concealable function. So anyway, pros, um, it's incredibly lightweight. I like the handle a lot. Um, the blade is very small proportionately to the handle, but they don't skimp on handle size. I wear like a size large glove. I don't have tiny hands. This, this texturing, um, the little rivet, like divots on the back, it's a really good solid place to put your thumb and if it's wrapped in the cord little wrap it in the cord before the ship you get to pick what color which is kind of cool they call it paracord it's not paracord it's a little thinner than paracord but whatever this knife is so small paracord might be a little bulky on it too the handle is it's a very secure grip when you're cutting um, if you were to use it like all day it might be a little rough on your hands just because it's a skeleton grip with the um paracord wrapped handle but I mean if you're outside doing bushcraft you're gonna have kind of rough hands anyway I, I wouldn't really be concerned about that or if you're in a survival situation um, that's gonna kind of be the least of your problems so I really like the handle how good it is to hold on to for the knife weighing like a hundred grams or something crazy like that it's so light um, now cons pretty much everything aside from it being lightweight and the ergonomical handle so it has a skeleton shaped thing which you can see on the website with the pictures I'll put the link in the description so the steel only comes, oh, and I added this paracord on that. 
So the steel only goes here and here, and there's a big empty spot in the middle where there's no steel. You can't really see too well because it's wrapped. But that makes it so when I at least, when I hold it like this, if I really wanted to, I think I could bend it this way or this way. Like, I don't know if you've ever bent a spoon or a fork. It's stronger than that. But I feel if I really wanted to, I could bend it. And that doesn't make me really that comfortable. I feel like if I were to baton with this and spend like all day really using this thing hard, it could bend a little bit. Um, and I don't think it would break, but it would make it harder to use. And I just wish it was a little bit stronger. They could add like an extra 50 grams of metal, you know, reinforce that a little bit more. They have another model that's slightly more reinforced. But the other thing that I don't like is the spine of the blade is kind of thick. But then for this to be like an EDC knife, it tapers out pretty flat. This, to me, seems more like something like a hunting knife that you'd use to skin an animal. Um, the blade is very wide for its length, and it gets very thin. Chopping tasks with it, or just hard use in general, the blade might chip and it'll wear out faster because it's just so thin. Um, so this is not a bushcraft knife, but if you're hiking, you're ultralight, you don't need your knife that much, and you want to have a knife just in case you get lost, or you have some sort of emergency type situation where you need something, this will be lighter weight than a folder, and beefier than most, I mean, more durable than almost any folder, um, except for like really heavy folders. So for the weight, this is going to be stronger and lighter than a folder. Now, something that I would recommend more for like bushcraft, be it in the jungle or around here, this is a Mora knife. This is the carbon steel one with a three inch blade and a wooden handle. They have ones with a rubber, rubber handle and a stainless steel blade. The blade is a little bit thicker. It has you know, the the taper is a little bit different. It feels much less fragile. It's full tang, and the tang is solid through the center. The tang doesn't... It's a traditional tang. It doesn't go like this. I think the failure point will be where the, the metal stops right here in the center, and then it goes around up and around down. So I, I really think if I really wanted to, I could torque back. For hiking in the, in the rainforest or jungle, you want to have a knife for, like, bushcraft-type tasks... I would really recommend the Mora in stainless, and I don't know the price off the top of my head. I'll put the link for it in the description, but I think it's like 30 or 40 bucks. It's like less than half the price of this, and I'm sure it's more durable. Will it weigh more? Yeah, um, but only by like a couple hundred grams, like a few ounces. It's, I think the weight's really ne negligible. The only thing that I like about this is this will be easier to carry either as a neck knife or be less noticeable on your hip because the handle's flat. So, pros. Incredibly lightweight, easy to carry in a non-obvious way, and supposedly this kind of, the, it's stainless and it shouldn't rust that much. I'll, I'll put the kind of stainless steel, it is in the description. I don't know that much about different kinds of stainless steels. I, I know a decent amount about like carbon content and carbon steel. I live in the northeast of the United States, so I've always primarily used carbon steel blades. I don't really have big issues with rust around here. So this is just like a overview. Um, I'm going to do another video after I've put this thing through its paces and tell you what I think. Hopefully it'll surprise me, especially because of the price point. But now, um, at the price point of $130, I wouldn't recommend this for anything other than ultralight backpacking. Even if, if you're like a backpacker and you're going to go backpack through South America, like what I'm doing, or you're going to backpack through North America, you're going to hike the Appalachian Trail or something, and ultralight isn't your thing, I go with the Mora, um, probably in stainless, because um, it's going to be the same amount of low maintenance, the handle's more comfy, you can do more with it, it's it's a little easier, this is a good grip, um, but the grip on this kind of almost reminds me of like a knife that would be more used for like fighting or something. Um, the grip on this is better for like carving stuff all day and you can choke up on it a little bit more. This is more like a traditional style grip and this is really makes me think of more like a neck knife. So this is for extreme ultralight, I would say. For 130 bucks, only get this if you're counting every 100 grams. If you're not counting every 100 grams, this is less than half the price. 
probably more durable. You can get it in the stainless in the same amount of um, rough protection. And I'm in no way af in affiliated with Kestrel or Mora. I just kind of wanted to make this review because Kestrel has a lot of self-promotion on their own website and they act like they're so great, but then you try to Google it and there's very few independent reviews. So, is it a good knife? Yeah. But for the price, it really is just a like a neck knife or like a skinny knife that's made out of high quality or like mid quality stainless steel and I don't know for now the price of 130 bucks just just get the Mora you know unless you really ultralight is super important to you I, I wouldn't bother